So imagine that circle there is all the knowledge in the world, all the knowledge that humans possess. When you go and finish primary school, you'll have that bit of knowledge in your head of all of the rest. High school, secondary school, you'll have that. Uh, when you come and do your bachelor's degree, you'll have a little bit more, and that little bump starts to show the specialization that you're starting to develop. And then a master's degree will get you over there. And then when you start reading the literature, you'll be at the very edge of human knowledge, at the very edge of that human knowledge. And um, once you're at the boundary, you begin to focus, very fine focus. My focus, I was telling everybody a moment ago, was blowing things up, pyrotechnic reactions. And you push at that boundary, and you push at that boundary for a few years, and eventually it pops open, and you've now advanced the boundaries of our knowledge. That is what a PhD is all about. Okay. Now, to you, certainly to me, my PhD looked big and important. I was making a huge contribution. But of course, that's what it looks like at <laughs> the body of knowledge. But the good news is there's lots of those PhDs going on all over um, the country and the world, and that's what's exciting. Um, so, that's what we're all about. We push that boundary, and it's all about advancing that boundary. But one of the things you need to advance that boundary, unfortunately, is money. And that's why writing grant proposals is very important. But we'll come to that. The other thing I want to share with you, it's, it's a book that I read. It's At the Edge of Uncertainty by Michael Brooks. Michael Brooks is a well-known science writer. So if you're ever looking for a book to read, I recommend get any of his books. He's really good. What's exciting about that is that he says science has explained much, but also shown where the boundary of our ignorance is. That line, that's the boundary. And most of us, our time as scientists, as researchers, are, is spent at that boundary. That's where we must operate. But the truth is beyond that boundary, there is ignorance. So we don't work in the field of knowledge. We actually work in the field of ignorance. Ignorance is nothing to be ashamed of because it's fertile ground. That's where the new knowledge will be created. And he uses this wonderful analogy, the shoreline of ignorance. Think of the shoreline, you know, beyond the shoreline into the water of ignorance. That's where we want to go. And it's sometimes frightening. It's sometimes uncertain. Well, it's ignorance. Of course it's uncertain. But that's where we need to go. A dangerous thing to do, he says. And he gives this example of black holes. Um, there was this Indian scientist who had come up with a fantastic uh, 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 calculation uh, that showed that black holes must exist. But the dominant astronomer at the particular time said, nonsense never exist, and went further. He went actually and trashed that guy's reputation, that Indian uh, astronomer's reputation. And about five to ten years later, he, uh, the Indian uh, astronomer was proved correct, and evidence came up for black holes. There is an element of that in our world of science as well. Um, but I'm just saying the excitement of working in the field of ignorance. That's what you guys do. And I'm really proud of you. So, what is the most important thing for you to be successful when you're in working in that space? What is the most important thing? So, before, um, what do you think is the most important? Yeah, success, the world research. So, what is most important? Funding or lots of good postgraduate students like you doing hard work, insights, equipment? What is the most important thing for your success? Now, I need you to do something for me. Hopefully, you've all got a piece of paper and a pen. If you have to use your laptop, that's okay. I want you to write down one phrase, maybe one word even. What do you think is the most important thing for you to work in that edge of knowledge? Okay? What do you think is the most? But I need you to write it down. Anything. Things like funding or equipment or... I don't know, whatever it is. Don't write me a sentence or a paragraph. Try and make it one, maybe two words, something like that. Yes? 
There's no right and wrong answer as well, so don't worry. Not a test. What do you think is the most important thing for your success? Try and make it just one or two words. Don't give me an essay. Okay, you done that? Good. So, what I want you to do now is use a code. Under each letter you've written down, so let's say you wrote down funding, I want you to write numbers. So, F, where is F? F is 6, so you write down 6. U, where is U? 21, so you'd write down 21. You with me? You know how to do? Write down those numbers for all the things, all the letters that you've done. That's why I didn't want you to write a paragraph. Okay? And what I want you to do when you've done that, add up your numbers and get a total for me. Add up your numbers and get me a total. Seven of my word was people. People, very good. 67. I like that. Anybody else? Yes? Um, my total was 125. 125. And, your and my word was support. Support, very nice. Lovely, yes. Connection, I like that. Gee, yes. 155 resources. Resources. Ah, oh, gee, you guys are really good. <laughs> yes. 152 funded. Say again, the word? Funded. funded. Okay, good. Lovely. Yes, man. 158 perseverance. Perseverance. Very good. Uh, 93 passion. Passion. Very nice. Lovely. Bernard? 115 for integrity. All very, very important. But I need to tell you, unfortunately, not as good as mine, which is coming soon. <laughs> All right. One more person. Anybody? Yes, sir. Right at the back. 96 for insight. Yes. Very, very important. Yes. Time. Time. How many is, is that? How many? 47. Okay. Time. Very, very important. Okay. Let me tell you what mine was attitude and it better because it comes out to exactly 100 <laughs> percent attitude so yes i think attitude is most important all right attitude is important for success attitude changes everything to be in working at the edge of knowledge and into uh, uh, um, the unknown requires the right attitude of course, all those other things as well. So you know this story about the glass. The pessimist, the glass is half full. The uh, optimist is glass half full. The pessimist half empty. And of course, the physicist says the glass is that equation over there. More importantly, what our attitude means is that instead of the glass looking like that, we have to make it look like that. Something special, something different. That's what it is doing research. Okay, so no similarity should be taken from this next slide, please. So, those are professors. Okay, <laughs> today I'm feeling grant-driven, not cited enough, underappreciated, impatient, disappointed, bored, tenured, dissatisfied, uh, underwhelmed, and not amused. Of course, the point is the expression doesn't change, so the attitude doesn't change, and that's what happens if you're in academia for many, many years, but not like a lot of experienced people here today. Uh, I'm not referring to them at all. So attitude, just so very important. Now, here's an example of the right attitude and how it gets you going. So the story is about an 18-year-old laboratory assistant in a chemistry lab. Sorry, borrowing from my experience. Chemistry lab. 18-year-old, that's young wanted to synthesize quinine at home during the Easter holidays. They had already started to tell you about his attitude. I mean, which student wants to go into the lab during the Easter holidays? And to synthesize quinine, you know quinine for anti-malarial treatment? This is many years ago, of course. Uh, that's not an easy thing to do at all. Um, his early attempts produced a black solid. Now, do you remember from your chemistry days, if you did some chemistry... If, if your reaction went wrong, what happened to it? It would turn into a tarry, gunky, dark brown, blackish lump at the bottom of your beaker. 
Okay, so that's bad, bad news. When you're trying to do something really special and it turns into that, that's very bad news. And what do you have to do? Well, you have to wash your beaker out to get this black tar out. And how, you do, how do you do that? Well, you try some water, you will try some alcohol, etc., etc. And what he noticed is that it turned the water and the alcohol washings purple. So what would most of us do if we found that situation? Remember, our experiment has failed. Failed. What do we do? Throw it away, start again? I don't know. He wondered if he could use these purple washings as a dye. Wow, that's a leap of, of, of unbelieved proportions. Most of us would have seen it as a failure. He saw it as an opportunity. Could I make a dye out of this stuff? And he patented the process, and he made a dye of it. And uh, it replaced Tyrian purple extracted from mollusks. Let me give you some context. If you look at history books, royalty, kings and queens, always from the past, always wore purple. The reason for that was that the only purple dye available was extracted from mollusks. And the problem is it wasn't stable. So when you walked outdoors with this purple dye, the sun would oxidize it and it would slowly turn brown. So you could use your purple robes once and then you would have to throw them away. So only the very, very wealthy were able to use purple clothes and hence the royalty. But his stuff that he came up, we called it Movin. That's the, the, the chemical structure. And his name was William Perkin, you know, Perkin Elmer, Perkin, yeah, that guy. He came up um, and it was stable. It would never change color. And so it is used still, but it's also the basis of denim, etc., etc. This you can't see, but it's a letter that he wrote to his father about the excitement of finding that. His father happened to be very wealthy, so he was able to patent it, set up a factory, and started producing dye. So you see the attitude, that's called serendipity. Instead of seeing the failure, he saw the opportunity and turned it into success. Okay, that's what you've got to make sure your, your research is governed by, is led by.